All right, Ollie, first on the agenda tonight is the news that Alex Witherden is our third Rising Star nomination of the season behind Eric Hipwood and Hugh McGluggage. Alex finished the loss to Richmond with 28 touches, uh, 550 metres gained, I think, and about four inside 50s in what was a really impressive game. Such an impressive game. He looks really good, this guy. To come into the side straight away and really dominate straight from the outset, it doesn't happen too often these days. It takes even really good players a long time to settle, but he's mm. just come in straight away and just absolutely killed it. So, Duck yeah, to water. Absolutely. And, yeah, I think it was a pretty easy choice for this week's Rising Star. There weren't too many people that disagreed, I, I think, straight after the game. Even most AFL pundits were saying, yep, he's got it in the bag after this one to mm. put three or four good performances together in a row. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. He, first game, he got 20 touches. Then against the Bombers in a win, he had 29 and was pretty quite crucial to that win, I thought. And then against Geelong, he had yeah. 21 to back up his 28 against Richmond. So, yeah, hasn't dipped below 20. Like, he does play that halfback role, which can be known to get a few easy kicks. But to be fair to him, his kicks have been pretty aggressive in that he takes a game on yeah, and usually results in good things happening further up the field. Yeah, and considering the amount of ball that's coming in each week, and especially on the weekend against Richmond, Mm. for a young player to just be calm, cool and collected down there, it just shows a lot about his character and, Mm. and just what we're going to see. And if he's delivering this sort of effort this early in career, like you just got to look forward to some really um, great years to come. Yeah, hopefully. It looks like a steal at pick 23 at the moment. I think one of the other things that um, can t- be taken for granted with Alex is he has really sharpened up our kickouts from defence. Like Typically, that has been Daniel Rich. But, <clears throat> yeah, Alex has sort of taken over those duties in recent times and, yeah, just hasn't missed a beat, really. Yeah, it hasn't missed the beat at all, and it does free up Daniel Rich a bit if he's taking the kickouts. Mm. Rich can get further up the ground, and I think he's more valued further up the ground off half back or mm. going forward. So, yeah, I think he, if you can have someone there apart from Rich doing mm. the kickouts, I think that's the way to go because, yeah, he's, he's way more dangerous further up the ground when he can in spot targets and just kick it inside 50. Um, the other... I suppose, newsworthy item at the moment is Nick Robbo, who walked a fine line on the weekend against Richmond, and particularly with his sort of ongoing duel with Dustin Martin. Um, Robbo's been rubbed out for one week, which is downgraded from two with an early plea for his, I suppose, the head butt, which you could put in inverted commas, on Trent Cotchin. Um, what was your initial reaction to that news? Well, considering Nick Robbo got a week and then Dustin Martin didn't get anything, <laughs> oh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. There is favourites playing mm. the AFL. They want the best players to be out there. You only have to go back to Barry Hall in the, the 2005 prelim final. Yeah, That was automatic two or three weeks during the season, but because it was grand final week, he somehow gets off and mm. Dustin Martin's a red-hot favourite for the Brownlow. He would have got the three votes again on the weekend. He absolutely dominated, so... So when it you, would have been a pretty bad look on Brownlow night if the, the favourite or the winner, the eventual winner, is actually yeah, ineligible. Like Chris Grant a few years ago now. Yeah, um, Cora when, when Yeah, when you were talking about him being lucky, are you referring to the incident with Louis Taylor at the start of the game? Dustin Martin? Yeah, yeah. He took out Louis. I actually haven't seen the footage, but... Straight after Richmond's first goal, Louis sort of on the ground, hunched over. But I don't think much footage of that has actually come to light. Was that what you're referring to, or something? Else? No, I was referring to the incident. With, you know, I think it was in the third quarter with Robbo. With his there eye, was a bit of yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Okay. If you go for the eye, mm. like surely that you're in trouble then. Yeah, and it looks quite deliberate as well. Like you can't just yeah. feel around someone's face in that particular region and not expect consequences. So. Probably agree yeah. with you. He is probably a tad lucky. Um, in terms of Nick Robbo, if you isolate that incident, do you think is a fair outcome? Or um, 
I think he's pretty unlucky, Robbo, to get a week, mm. considering they were just going at it all day. Obviously, Robbo gets in people's faces all the time and can be pretty um, feisty. Mm. We've seen that throughout the season. We saw it with Buddy Franklin as well. And he probably does get under the skin of these really good players, and that's why we love him as well. Mm. He's one of those guys that you love to have on the team, but you probably hate to see on the, the opposition. But, yeah, I think there was just tit and tat all day. And mm. I it, think it was pretty just stupid, let them both though. Go. Like, it wasn't really necessary. Like, we, as you said, we love how he lives on the edge in that respect and pushes the envelope. But I think that, yeah, it was probably just really quite unnecessary in what he did um, in terms of was it fair I think because he got looked at for a couple of corking incidents as well like did you did you see that how he tried to sort of knee Dustin Martin I think it was Trent Cotchin at another time as well yeah so, there were a few incidents during the game so maybe just in the grand scheme of things a week's yeah. probably fair just considering what he was, he was doing throughout the game but yeah, it's pretty disappointing he's going to be actually missing the the Carlton game this week because it is yes. a, a bit of a winnable one. Yeah, for We'd sure. We'd love to have him there. Um, it has been something, I think it was something I talked about with Nick when he came on because he came on after the Sydney game with Buddy. Do you think it's something that he's going to have to be coached with and say, you know, maybe rein it back a bit when you're missing out games and you're such an important part to add defensive structure, do you think that's something, a conversation that coaches might have to have? I know Dane Beams today in his press conference said, yeah, he might have to, you know, take the whack on the wrist and move on. Yeah, he might get a bit of a talking to, but you don't want to completely cut it out of his game as well. Mm. I think you saw with Johnson Brown early in his career, he was getting suspended a lot and yeah, good probably call. did get it talking to. And then after that, I think after probably he's third or fourth season, mm. he really wasn't even up at the tribunal at all no. after that. So, yeah, I think he's one of those guys that, that can learn. So, mm. like one week now, it's probably not too bad, but you don't want to see the really bad instance where you're, you're out for two, three, mm. four weeks. Because, yeah, yeah, we've seen this year just with a few incidents, so you can get plenty of weeks if you do something pretty stupid. I mm. think the... The tribunal really wants to cut down on those ugly incidents, but I yeah, sure. don't think there was really much in the the one that he did get suspended for. Mm. So no. it, it probably is worth a week um, in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, they probably will talk to him during the week, mm. the coaching staff. But yeah, we love how he goes about it, and he's really integral part down there now. He's had such a good season, as we've spoken about over the last few weeks. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> someone that rejoined the senior team on the weekend after a lengthy spell in the knee fall and resting at times as well was Josh Shackey. He finished with a few goals and looked pretty good, I thought. He looked really good. He looked a different player to what he was early in the season. Obviously, the contract negotiation, that really took a toll on him. Mm. And he just looked a shadow of himself. He just wasn't attacking the ball well and he just didn't look like he wanted to be there. And that was really bad signs for us because we're thinking, okay, he might be on the way out. But I think it was just the, the toll that all the media speculation and everything else was um, happening in his life. So mm. now that he's signed that contract, he looked like the Shacky we saw early last year and took a couple of really good masks, a couple of goals, and it, was, it really attacked the footy well. Yeah. It's probably the best I've seen him attack the footy even last year as well. Mm. And that's probably one of the knocks on him that he wasn't quite aggressive enough yet, which can be the case for a lot of players coming out of the under-18 system because it's a far more physical game in the, the AFL, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah, I think he'll just learn to grow into his body. And, yeah, it was a really promising start. He's, he's paid his dues in the, the knee full. He's coming off a, a big bag. So, de- deserve his spot. And, I, yeah, I think there was some really promising signs there. Yeah, for sure. Um, to use a cliche, it definitely, it just looked like a weight had been lifted off your shoulders. Like, as you said, he was a new man. And I think one of the most pleasing things about the game was that he got involved and worked his way up onto the wing to make, I suppose, <clears throat> make himself a target as that link up man, not just isolating himself inside 50. And to his credit, he worked hard and finished with a few goals. And 
yeah, he looked really, really good. So hopefully he can build that synergy with Eric Hipwood for the rest of the year and build towards bigger and better things. Um, as a game as a whole against Richmond, we obviously went down by 31 points in the end. Um, it was a funny game. Like Richmond just completely dominated out of the centre square and the centre clearances. But to the defence's credit, they probably held us in the game for as long as they did. And then, yeah, I guess the overwhelming tide of Richmond's run just got the better of us and they won by five goals. Yeah, it could have been a lot more. The defence were really, really good. 67 inside 50s to 39. The the weight of ball, the the clearances, they absolutely killed us in there. And that's Mm. just so frustrating because we're supposed to have that's supposed to be one of our strengths, the midfield. Mm. But Beams, Rockcliffe, Zorko all had down days. And if that's going to happen, we're not in for a good day at all. To, to have all three of them be down, I know Rockcliffe and um, Beams are probably still struggling with a bit of injury, and I think that would have taken its toll. But centre clearances, 20 to 4. It was an absolute killing. And mm. even the clearances we did get around the ground, they weren't... Um, they weren't great clearances. No. They were just sloppy. It was sort of a kick out of the pack. We might have turned it over straight away. So yeah. it was really difficult to get any momentum there. And Richmond just seems that Dusty Martin, as we know, he's an absolute star. He was just bullocking out of the centre and causing too much trouble for us. But, yeah, it was a pretty disappointing game. There were some positives just with the younger guys and how much they did stand up because without those young guys standing up, it could have been very, very ugly and... The bogey side again, Richmond. Richmond, we yeah. Just seem to save our worst footy for Richmond. It's just, oh, I would love to say a win against mm. Richmond any time soon, but we're going to have to wait another year. Do you think the injuries, the shoulder injuries to Beams and Rockcliffe are hampering the output at the moment? Oh, I think they have to be. Beams came back probably Very too quickly. soon. We're... we're Expected him to miss out on maybe mm. another week or two. But he came back in the side and he hasn't been the same player that he was before he got injured. It's mm. it's clear and he obviously is still hampered by that. So maybe it would have been good for him to sit out a couple of weeks, get himself right. Because mm. you can see players come back too early and hopefully he can find some form and really get over that knock. But yeah, Rockcliffe as well. Just really, really quiet. It would have been one of his quietest games in his whole career. To only have, I think, 14 possessions. It was um, pretty concerning. Donut in the last quarter as well. Didn't even get a touch. Yeah. Um, I think we've now got, I suppose, a body of work that says the Geelong game and the Richmond game were just completely uncompetitive out of the centre clearance. I think you might have to ask the question is if... Rocky and Beams are both injured to this extent if we can actually carry them both. Because at the moment, teams are just doing yeah. as they wish out of the middle and you just can't afford to have players that can't, you know, use their their full potential and defensively lay tackles and stop the opposition. Because at the moment, and it was particularly evident on the weekend as Richmond's just brushed, brushed aside our tackles with far too much ease. So... I don't know, do you think it's worth maybe playing them on a rotational basis? Like, you still need that leadership, and I get why they're in the team, but do you think it's worth alternating and say, all right, Rocky's going to play this week, and then Beam's going to play the following week, or do you think that's overcomplicating things a bit too much? No, it's probably overcomplicating things, but if their form doesn't warrant being the side, I don't think it'll come to a stage where Beam's wouldn't be first choice. He's an absolute superstar, but... Mm. The way Rockliffe's been the last few weeks, it's, it's pretty concerning. Just mm. the, the drop-off he's had since early in the season when he was just the clearance king. Uh, we just haven't seen that the last few weeks. But the form would really have to drop away to, to see them sit out. So I, I can't see it happening. Um, I suppose some other positives from the game, as we spoke about earlier, was the defence, particularly Harris Andrews, Dan McStay. I thought Sam Mays was okay as well. Um, it's good to see those younger guys leading from the front and I suppose picking up the slack of the older guys. Yeah, that was the one of the really positive things just to see those guys really stand up. Yeah, Louis Taylor I thought was great. Yeah, good Sam call. Good call. Yep. Um, Bastnack was okay. 
yeah, Harris Andrews again just down back. Like there was mm. just so much ball coming down there, and he's basically the leader of the defence now at what twenty twenty one. Mm. He's already played over fifty games, so he just he's a star, you know? and he's sh- showing that every week. So even though um, Nick Luckage as well, some yeah, good signs good. there. It's pretty good. So yeah, the younger players, I think we can hang our hat on that. Mm. So. It could have been in the past. It would have been a lot worse. Yeah, for sure. Considering how badly Beams, Zorko, and Rockliffe were down, mm. it could have been absolute belting. Then the thirty-one points paper doesn't look too bad at all. Um, this week we move on to Carlton, who aren't in a too dissimilar position to us. Probably, well, they they do have a few more wins on the board and have been pretty competitive <clears throat> in all of their games, but. At the Gabba, you'd have to think we're a pretty good chance. Yeah, you'd like to think so, but mm. as we've spoken about before, we just haven't played our best footy at the Gabba. Uh, I think on that Fremantle game, we played really well, but mm. we've had some beltings at the Gabba. But I think against Carlton, they've got to say this is a really winnable game. Mm. Carlton's been really competitive. They've had some great wins. We're okay against the Dogs on Sunday and lost by 20 points. So they're going to go up there really hungry. They're going to say this is a extremely winnable game as well. So no, it should be a really good contest. I think talking about the Gabba, I guess Hudo at the moment. I think I did the numbers before we lost to Geelong, and the average margin was minus forty two for the season. So yeah, not ideal that we're saving the worst performances for the the fans and the members at home. But you'd, I'd expect even if we didn't win, this would be a close game, Carlton. The, playing a pretty dour sort of brand of footy at the moment and really sort of <clears throat> slugging it out and bringing better teams down to their level, which is good because they're not at a stage where, you know, they're going to be world beaters. So hopefully we can win a scra- what I predict would be a scrappy game against the Blues. Yeah, I think we should get over the line, but mm. we're going to need a massive lift out of Beams, Rockcliffe, uh, Zorko again, so... Mm. It's definitely a winnable game, but yeah, hopefully we can lift at the Gabba for the fans. Any foreseeable changes that you'd make? Obviously, Robbo comes out for his suspension. I don't think there was any other injuries from the week. No, I think we escaped okay. First time in a while so, it's happened. Yeah, someone's got to come in for Robbo. Mm. But apart from that, I think you've got to give those younger guys a chance. I think there wouldn't be too many that you would see going out of the side and no. yeah, you can't drop the older players because they just had a bad day, mm. but I yeah, think obviously someone comes in for Robbo. Cedric Cox at times looked a bit like a deer in the headlights, but he sort of bounced back and did some really, really creative, exciting things that make you think, oh, you know, once he sort of gets the hang of the speed and the tempo of, you know, the big league, this guy's going to be pretty, pretty damn exciting. Yeah, he just needs a, a bit of confidence out there, I think. He's mm. just got the speed, all the attributes, but he just isn't quite putting it together. And the pressure that he had down there at times, it would make even seasoned defenders yeah. pretty nervous. So I think maybe going back to the Gabba, a bit of a bigger ground, I think we'll give him another go. And I'd, I'd like to see him get another go because he's got so much talent. Yeah, and it's, we've got nothing to lose, do we? Sort of building through the youth, may as well get the... The games into them, but um, someone that's been close to selection the last few weeks has been Jacob Allison. I think an emergency on the weekend, so someone like him might get a go and place a robo. Some of the, how many other names sort of leaping to mind in terms of replacements? Maybe like a Liam Dawson in defence, even though his last game against the Bulldogs was um, not the best. He got exposed. Quite badly in defence at times, but living. Yeah, potentially. Mm. I think probably a line's been put through Jared Jansen. I think he's been going okay in the yeah. in the twos, but yeah, I don't think Fagan really sees him as part of the future. He, so I, I don't the, think he'll get a chance. I watched the last game against Aspley, and he was really good. I think he kicked four or five from sixteen or so touches. But yeah, I think I think you're right. I think. You know, he's had two years up here now to make a name for himself and hasn't really set the world on fire, so probably going to 
be a casualty at the end of the season. But um, yeah, I, I guess we'll get make our tip for the weekend. How much do you think you you're pretty confident the Lions will win? How much do you think they'll get home by? Oh, I don't think we'll be belting just because of the way Carlton are playing at the moment. Mm. Very defensive style of footy and probably not a lot of goals in it. No. So I think we might get up by about three goals. Three goals. I'm, I'm going to go 10 points either way. I think it's just one of those games. It's going to be two kicks or less, whoever wins. But hopefully, for our sake, it's the Lions. Absolutely. All right, mate. Good chatting, and we'll do it again next week. Thanks, Gags. Speak to you next week.